welcome to the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel. I'm Jared. Today we're doing an unboxing for the latest Kickstarter delivery. This is a game from Renegade Game Studios, My Father's Work. Uh, this is the Kickstarter edition. Uh, I believe the stretch goals and all that kind of stuff are in this box. So uh, when it comes out retail, it may or may not have everything that you see in here. But I wanted to get it all open and unboxed for you on camera. I'm very excited for this game. Uh, I like the sort of darker uh, theme and, and the just the general look of it all. It's a two to four player narrative story driven type game and it involves uh, players are taking on the lab and the, um, I don't know, like experiments from their father and then their father's father and that sort of thing. So it's like generations go down of, of learning and, and doing experiments on all sorts of crazy type stuff and I think that's where some of the cards are but uh, let's take a look uh, and see what components come with the game uh, I think this uses a uh, app integration for how it tells some of those stories and that sort of thing um, with several scenarios included so it should be very interesting uh, very cool very replayable and as you can see there's a lot of these spot UV um, type um, areas here on the cover the box is nice and big and sturdy so right on top we've got a really big rule book with some cool artwork icons on the back and um, fairly big text actually so it it kind of feels like a larger like booklet but uh, I don't think it's really going to be that much uh, to read through um, not more than a normal rule book uh, it's for ages 14 and up it says 180 minutes you know that's Good three hour game um the village chronicle book which i believe is kind of what you explore through kind of like a stuffed fables game um so the cost of disease which i assume is like the first scenario and uh you got different action worker spaces and stuff that you kind of slowly reveal um and i guess all that changes depending on you know the situation and the scenario that you're in um, we have here some punch out tokens and so the backs of them have this one slash two Roman numeral and then I don't know some costs here so you can buy these things the hedge maze gain a victory point at the end of each round the formaldehyde you may hold one additional completed experiment between generations so these are all like special bonus and boons and stuff like that and so here some of these have uh, named locations or uh, well they say vanity but they have varying things so final scoring I see so different ways to score some extra points at the end of the game um, plus victory point tokens for the four colors in the game and some yay tokens or nay tokens which I'm guessing there's gonna be some voting moments in the game so these I'm excited to look at. These are uh, like double sided. No, I mean, um, double thick, I guess I should say, like like dual layer boards. These are your player boards. They look really, really nice. Um, so I think the center area room is your color. So yellow, black, green, blue. Uh, well, I don't know, but uh, but they are a little different. I think from what I'm looking at, they all have the same icons on them. But uh, let's see. So let's take a look at these. They've got these different indentations for cubes, which uh, I see chemistry, biology, engineering, and occult. And I believe these are like about keeping what you've learned between generations. Um, shared experiments. So like you keep a card under there. These will be for those different tiles that we saw. And it looks like there's a premium to add some extra tiles in here of some money there. And uh, it says, when your token is overtaken by the angry mob, your pieces may only visit the church in town. So that's a little reminder for some worker placement type of stuff going on. But these are nice. These are very, like, thick, you know, dual layer, nice, nicely drawn art. So over here, we've got a couple, couple boards. Um, let's see if we can figure out how these all align. So we'll put this down here and... This looks like it goes right around here. Okay, and this one also down here. Ta-da! 
So there's a lost area that I can see. There's probably these victory points. I see angry mob, tracker. There's creepy on one side. So as you get creepier and the angrier the mob gets, you know, you might meet in the middle. And then this little spot in the middle, um, does this go in here? I don't know. Or does it go down here? It certainly fits. And there's two sides, insanity. Are there, there's this, so this one's labeled one to two and this one's labeled three. So I think that might be like three acts of like a story. So you might start on this side here on the board and then once you get through it, you turn it over. So um, there's an insanity track. There's some different icons here. I'm not sure how all of that works. I haven't fully read through all the rules or anything like that, but there are some miniatures. So let's take a look at these. Um, it's got this really nice tray, custom made looking thing from Game Trays. Very cool. Got this big old purple deal going on. We have some cards stuck in here. Let go right here. Let's see if I can open that up and see what they are. Turn sequences and symbols. So these are nice reference cards, reminders, and things to do during the game. So it's good to have a nice reference card. Uh, for each player, we have some nice looking minis here that I believe are um, not, they're not necessarily painted, but they have kind of a wash effect on them. So they kind of look like a, like a marble kind of look on them. You can see there's different sculpts, different, uh, like floor, I don't know, like this one has like kind of a wooden floor on the bottom of the, the base of that. Okay, and I guess each player would have like one of each of these guys is uh, how it looks. Like this guy you can see is like standing on like a marble or stone floor and holding like a flask or something. Um, this lady, what she got? large dress but she's holding some like a flask and something else i can't really tell in her hand um, there's four of those and then lastly there's this guy he's kind of your uh your assistant probably looks like he might be holding a lantern and uh like you can tell there is a little difference there in the coloring on some of these just on how the wash uh the paint you know kind of looks I bet it's going to look really nice from, you know, while it's sitting on the table. So we have some plastic bases, white and maroon, black and purple. I know that the different bases go like on the different types of characters. Um, I don't know if it'll fit in there, but here we've got more tokens. These appear to be wooden. Yep. And they have some screen printing on them. Very nice. I'm going to kind of pick up a couple. And they are screen printed on both sides. Except for this one. The generation marker. Blank on the back. And let's see if I got one of like everything in my hand here. There's a creepy marker. <laughs> um, insanity. Alright, so I'm going to hold that up to the camera for a minute. So you can see. These are pretty good good sized uh, you know meeples and wooden pieces there i like that they're screen printed i think it turned out really well like you know with the images and everything you can see them very clearly and this one has a star on one side and the book on the other and there's quite a few of uh, those and we have just another wooden circular disc and on this side it's got this little symbol for tracking stuff probably one of these things but anyway that's some wooden components. Let's see if I can just toss them quickly back right in there. Okay, and we also have some more wooden tokens in the other bag. So more uh, creepy insanity. These special black and purple tokens, which have gargoyles and like knight's armor and stuff. There's a first player token. There's the uh, angry mob token. There's a round tracker. And another one of these like 
lantern, uh, well, not lantern, but like electricity things for experiments. So there's those. I like the look of the uh, the knight armor, and even that the shape of the meeple like kind of outlines it really well. It just looks cool. There's a lot of cool components in here so far to look at. I'm just gonna put this back if I can to keep going in. Look at the next thing. So this one actually says my father's work on the top, in addition to game trays but it looks cool. And look at all this stuff. Now that is interesting. These jars are actually like glass jars with little toppers. You could actually use this for stuff, but I'm guessing you put these cubes in them and you get like an actual like jar of cubes for various potions and stuff. So there's two, four, six, eight, sixteen, 16, I suppose. Um, so there you go. Four jars for each player. We have some, like, coffin tokens. Um, some are, like, just cheap wooden coffins. Some are, like, a mid-grade coffin. And then the others that have this, like, cross on it. That kind of thing. Um, wooden pieces also. Cut, you know, um, special cut and screen printed. And then, of course, there's black, blue, green, and yellow cubes. Um, here we've got um, some metal gears, which are one of the resources. And yes, they are metal. Um, there are different shapes of them. I will say the components so far are really blowing me away. I love how this all looks and feels. And I'm really excited to try this now. Like, I mean, more than usual, or more than I would, was, right? Be able to see everything and how it looks in your hands. Like, these are the three different types of gears, uh, shapes, but I assume that they all do the same thing. Um, but it's neat to have different types of cogs and everything. So, they feel good, they look nice, they're metal. So I'll put those right in here. We have some, looks like, animal tokens, uh, and some more coffins. I see like an owl, um, an elephant, a bear. I mean, just all kinds of things, really. Everything's like very unique. Um, there's a bat. I'm going to get this in close onto the camera for you guys. Um, all of it's screen printed. It's not just the shape. Like, just really nice looking. Really makes me want to play this. Really wants to, you know, I mean, it looks cool. You've got the fox, a jaguar, cat. Or maybe not a jaguar. I guess that's probably just a cat. Got a bear, uh, warthog, bat, owl, rat, goat, horse, raven, deer. That's what I'm seeing here. Very cool. And then we have two bags of the coins. Um, looks like the ones are in the left and the fives are in the right. And these are very heavy metal coins. Okay. Very nice. So, the, uh, the image is the same on both sides, but there's ones and fives, and they are very heavy, shiny metal. Very cool. Can't wait to try it. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be cool. I'm looking forward to it. And I mean, just look at all those glass jars. Like, that is nifty. Very nifty. Just gonna put that back on like this. Moving right along. We have some cards in here. Big ones, small ones. Okay, some spots in there as well. So a lot of work went into the uh, the look of this and even the trays and the organization of it. So it's very cool. So right here first is some um, small cards, which I'm guessing are maybe insanity cards. So compulsion, compulsion cards. So victory points. There's some um, flavor text there at the top and at the bottom, you've got some abilities maybe, or uh, you must do certain things to get some extra points. Maybe I don't know how many of these you can earn in the game, but uh, different ways to get some 
some extra points in there. A, B, C, right? So let's take a look at what these are. I think these are the varying levels of experiments that you'll be able to draw and try to complete for points. Now, can I open it? That's always the question. Carefully. All right. We have some of these. We have some of uh, some special cards, and we have some more of the level C experiments. So I believe what's on the left are costs and prerequisites. So of course you'll need like a level A and maybe two level Bs to be able to make uh, experiment C. We have teleportation, the creature, Nyctalope. Lycanthropic Strength, Immortality, Love Potion, Time Machine, and Giant Spider Chariot. I like how the Time Machine is kind of a mix of the TARDIS because it's kind of like a phone booth instead of a police box and also Bill and Ted. And some of the look on the side there also reminds me of the uh, Orson Welles, um, or the Time Machine, but the book. So, anyway. And then the backs of these, these say maladjustment cards, clinging, writer's block, loose lips. Um, so these are all negative cards <laughs> that affect you during the game. So you don't want to get some of those. Those can be very bad for you. Now let's open the next set of cards, see what these might hold for us. If I can carefully get them. Okay, level C, and then B. So for the C's, there's some more cryogenic chamber, actual wings, iron mole, inside out crocodile. I'm curious where all the, uh, the experiments, like ideas for them came from, for what to include, you know, in the, in the game. Here's some level B experiments, crossbred, livestock, human to animal skin grafting, faithful companion, telegraph machine, the camera obscuria, human vivisection, brain transplantation, hypnosis study, channeling spirits of the dead. So there's all sorts of crazy, creepy stuff that you'll be doing in the game. Very cool. And the last deck of cards here. Okay. There's some more B. Walk-in refrigeration unit, the Zeppelin, sterilization, laundry detergent, volunteer sleeping and trials, homeopathic dilution, the removed tail that is still alive. Interesting. Put those in there. And these are all level A experiments. So these are the ones that you got to do first, perhaps. And I see the victory points here, one or two victory points. Um, the cubes that are needed for the experiment. That kind of thing. And uh, I'll try to kind of go through these cards, but if you turn on like slow mode, slow motion on the, on the video, you can always slow it down and then pause on any of the cards that you're really wanting to look at. But I want to get through everything in the box in a reasonable amount of time. So we have several boxes here, and I think these are for the various scenarios that come in the game. Uh, not sure if I should open this or if it's one of those don't open until you go to do it. Um, it tells you what's in it though, like seven experiment cards, dubious bartering cards, letter cards, masterwork update cards, immortality cards, 
upgrade tiles. Um, yeah, so there's there's quite a bit in these boxes. Um, the little description of the cost of disease says the yellow fever had struck the village. Any visit to its somber limits forced the young heirs to keep a cloth handkerchief about their mouth and nostrils to protect themselves from the miasma. This seemed the perfect, if macabre, backdrop in which to advance their father's dreadful business. Um, perhaps the rule book might tell me if it's a good idea to open this now or not. Um, if I can open one, I will. Let's see. Construct the puzzle board, suspicion marker. Set up pieces, choosing scenarios, three different scenarios with components that will only be used when playing that scenario. And it'll ask you to retrieve certain things. Yep, yep, yep. Branching storyline. You won't see everything in the storybook during a single game, nor will the same criteria for branching the story be used in a subsequent game. Also, do not be alarmed if certain components within a box are never used during your game, as your collective actions will determine what direction the story takes. It will take several plays of the same scenario to unlock all the paths, endings, and components a story has to offer. Okay, so... I mean, it doesn't look like it's supposed to be hidden information, um, but just organized information. So maybe we'll look at the first one, and I'll leave the last two to, to you guys when you get to explore that, because I don't want to you know, spoil anything that you might be really uh, eager, eager to see. Okay. Open this one. Ta -da. So there's a bonus coin in here. The mayor. Coin for the mayor. Deck of cards that say the cost of disease on them. We've got some letters and some extra. So, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, interesting. I'm gonna put them back. It's kind of like, I, I'm going to end up sleeving my game, but like maybe I just throw in a, 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 a bag of sleeves in the box for whenever I get to the next scenario, you know, and sleeve it when I'm ready. Um, but you got special tokens already pre-punched out and everything for the scenario, which I imagine will be the same in the other boxes. Um, new vanity tokens for in-game scoring some heart tokens, some more things to put in your board. We've got a new like crossbow token and wolf token and like bottle of elixir type of thing. I'm not sure. I think something fell. So lots to look at here and um, don't want to look too hard because I don't want to spoil what might happen in the game because you know I want to play it and be as surprised as possible perhaps um so that is everything in the box minus those two scenarios that i will let you discover on your own uh when it comes time to you know choosing a scenario and doing that but this is what you might expect to find in those boxes without going into too much detail um so this has been a full unboxing um my Father's Work by Renegade Game Studios. Make sure to like and subscribe, comment, let me know what you think of it, and stick around on the channel. Um, we've got a lot of tutorials on the channel, as well as plenty of other content like news every other week that I do. We have a podcast that's called Mentor Minutes, and, uh, and plenty others. So stick around. I hope to see you again in the next video, but until then, I've been Jared. See you next time.